All right, pitcher's up. Take one. We really didn't start to write the substitute. We started off on some other track. Chaos at first, um, fun. I have never had that much fun trying to write something because we really didn't know what we were doing, and, but we learned. Through lots of ideas out there, everybody had their own idea of what uh, we wanted to project. Um, and we just kept throwing ideas out. We change things. We go back to uh, zero. <laughs> and um, then we get something that we really think is going to work. Started with it being more focused on the background of the kid with the gun. And the substitute was going to be a peer, a, another student. Um, but then if you call it the substitute and you're out of school, why not have it a substitute teacher? <laughs> because I found out you guys had a film ministry, uh, I was like a deer in headlights. I was excited, didn't know where to do, but I just wanted to be involved. Uh, could not wait. So as whatever it was, if I had to be a water boy, I'd be fine with that. I was, I was just excited to be part of it. It was exciting. I mean, to get to the point where we were actually doing this thing that we'd been working on and just the anxiety of hoping that it all worked out the way that we intended for it to um, and that it would truly be something to glorify God because that was what we really, really wanted it to be. This whole thing was coming together finally and I was also so incredibly nervous because uh, I knew that as um, uh, director and uh, producer that uh, if I didn't have my stuff together that this was going to go very very poorly and um, so I was almost physically ill that morning I was was physically ill that morning one of the things with our film crew that I think um, professionals <laughs> might differ is our teamwork we all work together as a team you know, we're all in this together. We didn't necessarily know what we were doing or what to expect, but we all worked really well together, I think. And I think that helped it go smoothly. I've been dreaming of doing movies my whole life. I did choosy, stupid videos in high school, and, and now I was doing actually something really professional, being on set with professional actors who have worked with incredible actors like Denzel Washington and you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I was really excited. And I thought it was just going to be easy, you know. We're directors. It's, you go in and, and you sit behind the camera and that's it. There was so much more work involved than I was prepared for. So now I'm, now I'm ready for the next one. We ended up hiring out some key positions, gaffer, um, uh, focus puller, that sort of thing. But, uh, but our church pulled together and uh, filled in all the other positions. And I was so proud of them. I just can't even express how incredible that was. And they know how to make movies now. And uh, that's pretty cool. I picked up the actors at uh, the hotel every morning at 6.30. I had to have them on, uh, on site uh, by seven. Um, when I got there the first day, they were still eating breakfast. So um, I didn't know whether I should hurry them or not. <laughs> didn't seem like I should. <laughs> Uh, and kept track of what scene we were in and what take on the scene it was and had to keep track of filters on the camera and what lens we were using and that kind of thing. I was the shut up we're about to roll guy. Um, I was the guy that screamed, quiet on set, roll sound, roll camera, camera speed, whatever. So I was that guy that was pretty much, while everyone was trying to have fun and communicate and talk with each other, I had to be the buzzkill and tell everyone to shh really loudly. I was a PA, a production assistant, and I was assistant to the camera. You know, I'd like to uh, say uh, something special about um, our cameraman, uh, Caleb. He um, is a pretty incredible. Uh, he can take any piece of equipment and uh, know how to use it and use it well almost instantly. And uh, just, uh, he's not just a cameraman. He's a camera operator, he's our director of photography. He knows, he's learned enough 
that he knows how to uh, to frame a shot. He knows how to read my mind, so he pretty much knows how I'm going to want a shot framed before uh, I even get to the monitor. So um, he made things go very smoothly. I got a ton of things. I got a ton of things that I really enjoyed, but the one thing that I really enjoyed, the props, obviously. The props are awesome. Look at this. I mean, look at, don't even, okay, it hurts a little bit. Look, at just got a gun. I just worked this. Ow, okay, all right. They're awesome. It was amazing to watch the actors as they as they prepared for the roles and how they and how they acted and and the kids were great. They acted very intimidated and very scared and it was great watching them. One of my favorite uh, things about this film was something that most people probably didn't even realize and that was the blackboards in the background behind the desk uh, in, behind the substitute teacher. Um, that is actually a whiteboard in the school that we are using. So I struggled, struggled, trying to figure out how we're going to get blackboards in there. And so we ended up uh, taking uh, one eighth inch uh, hardboard, painting uh, chalkboard paint on them and cutting them to, to fit right on top of those whiteboards. And we took them in there uh, like the weekend before. And uh, again, just nervous that I don't know if this whole thing's going to work or not. This could be just the biggest disaster of my life. And um, we put those fake blackboards up there, and they fit perfectly. I mean, they fit perfect. We didn't have as many kids as we thought that showed up, and we had a uh, day where we were going to have pretty much the evacuation of the school. And so you're thinking a high school probably has two, 300 kids, and we only ended up having, like, 40 people show up. So we kind of had to... Um, one of my main things was our last day of the shooting at the school was uh, I had to place kids in certain areas to make it look like we had a ton of people in there when really it was, uh, it looks like we probably have 200 people in there or so, but now nah, it was really only 30, 40 kids. Toward the end of our filming in Riverton, um, our, our assistant director Andy came to me and said, uh, we need you to write something for one of our actors to say at the end of the film. And I said, well, Okay, how much uh, time do I have? He said, 15 minutes. We'll give you 15 <laughs> minutes. So I found an empty classroom and I went in there and uh, I, I wrote it. I showed it to him. Uh, we made some tweaks. And then Bradford performed it. And I just, I'll never forget how I felt when he did that because words that I had just written were coming out of his mouth in such a professional way. I'll never forget it. They were long days, we were there at 6 a.m., we didn't leave till 8 p.m. at night, and the last day we had loaded up all of the equipment, we'd cleaned all the rooms, and there were the weights to be moved. And we'd been there since like 6 o'clock in the morning, just working constantly, and so the only way we could do it is just, I had to start singing, and we were just pushing them, and I was screaming on the top of my lungs just to not lose my mind because it was so strenuous and so... I was just sweating, I was dying, I was, I was just ready to go home and the only way I can get through it is if I was screaming at the top of my lungs while we were pushing this cart of hundreds of pounds of weights through the hallways. We can build this thing together. Oh, we're probably going to get sued so I can't really probably sing, I'll hum it.
You know, church is no longer inside the four walls. Um, we have had to change our uh, aspect of ministry and, and the very face of ministry. Ministry is now outside the four walls. And the reason is people, we, we always expect people to come to the church. They don't know the way because they're lost. So we have to go out and reach them. So uh, the whole face of ministry has changed and this project has been, uh, it is a great way to go out and reach the masses. Really, really, really proud of Journey Church and the people of Journey Church that came together to make a film. When none of them have ever worked in Hollywood, none of them have ever made a film besides just getting out their phone and you know making little videos, none of them had made a professional uh, production before. And so I didn't know how that was gonna go. When I first saw it, I was giddy. I was like a little schoolgirl. I was so excited. I think I was more excited than anybody just because I just had so many ideas of what it was gonna look like and it just surpassed everything. Um, but uh, ultimately, this isn't a just a, a film with uh, funny stories and everything like that. It, it truly is our best effort, our first effort um, with a film company to try to reach the lost to people, like you say, are watching screens. It's a screen world we live in. They're looking at their phones, their tablets, their TVs, um, movie screens, and so we're going right to them. I had one person say that um, their heart broke for God when they watched this film, that he would give us Jesus. Um, I was sitting in the premiere watching a few people and uh, I saw people crying. And so um, that was our hope that uh, the power of film, which is that film is a, an emotion machine, uh, it has the power to move people, that that would kick in and um, be the, the instrument to allow people to think deeper into what God has done. And uh, I think it did that. And I believe that is our MO uh, for uh, future films that we will make. And so we want to keep making films like that.